mi linda tierra, la novia del soldado de Tercio Pedro en su sierra. Solar Energy International is proud to offer an exciting hands-on learning experience located on the Atlantic coast of Nicaragua. This training opportunity is in partnership with Blue Energy Group, an organization that helps developing communities integrate hybrid wind and solar electric systems. Blue Energy manufactures renewable energy technologies locally to build the capacity and infrastructure needed to sustain the energy systems beyond installation as well as create local jobs where they are desperately needed. Recently, Solar Energy International interviewed the founder and executive director for Blue Energy about this program and the positive effects for these communities. <laughs> My name is Matsis Craig, and I'm one of the co-founders and the executive director of Blue Energy. And Blue Energy works to bring power to isolated communities, helping them transition from relying on relief to starting small businesses. So we work with communities that are very isolated, very poor, and have sort of multiple barriers to participating in development that's happening around the world. And, and we work with them to bring basic services, um, primarily renewable energy, and clean water. And we also work to help um, act as a connector, to help connect these communities to other services that other service providers are providing around them, but not to them. Yeah, I think it's, it's absolutely critical, and especially now more than ever, that people really blend their book knowledge with their hands-on experiential learning. Um, it's just a global trend with globalization you have to learn to work with uh, multicultural, multinational teams. And, and ultimately, it just helps solidify your knowledge when you actually do something with your hands. So I know many people within Blue Energy have gone through various SEI programs, and that really helped galvanize Blue Energy in its early days. And now we're partnering with SEI doing this workshop in December. I think it's a, it's a fantastic opportunity for people to do hands-on and also to do hands-on in the field. Um, it's one thing to do hands-on in a workshop, which is great, but if you get an opportunity to do it actually in the area that it's going to be implemented in, um, I think there's some tremendous value there, both from the technical standpoint and also you see how the interface of the technology and the culture um, happens. So I think that's really a great opportunity. And Blue Energy also has a service learning internship program where people can come down for two to six weeks and live um, in the Blue Energy facilities, and work with Blue Energy, and really get to experience um, the technology, but also get to experience, again, the cultural elements of the work um, hands-on. Yeah, it's, it's a region that, that has a lot of challenges. Um, Nicaragua itself is the second poorest country in the Western Hemisphere after Haiti, and the Caribbean coast within Nicaragua is, is by far the poorest region. So it's, it's a very, very poor area. Um, it's very rich in, in culture and cultural diversity. It's a multi-ethnic society, um, many different indigenous groups, different Afro-descendant groups, um, Spanish descendants as well. So it, it's rich in culture, but from a development perspective, um, it lacks most civil infrastructure. Uh, there's no hardly any roads on the Caribbean coast. There's there's no national grid except for in one location, and there's no water system, no sewage system. So it lacks a variety of what we would consider sort of basic fundamental services, which makes development of any other sector very difficult. Um, it's a bit of a, a catch-22. It's very hard to develop where there where there isn't much development already. So, for example, on the, in, on the issue of electricity, only about 20 to 25 percent of the people on the Caribbean coast have access to electricity. So, that, that's just one illustration of, of the kind of lack of basic services. And without electricity, you don't have access to modern communication, and refrigeration, and water pumping, and a variety of other things that you, that you need to participate in modern development. So we have a couple different models um, for energy delivery, energy service delivery. Um, the larger one is a community battery charging station where we install sort of a central wind turbine and solar panels 
on a community center, for example, I mean, we installed the wind turbine next to it and uh, the solar panels on the roof. And putting a power center can either be a clinic or a community center or a school or a church. And then in that model, individual homes have their own energy use parts of the system. So they don't produce energy at the home level. What they do is they bring their battery to the community charging station, pay a fee, a battery charging fee, and then carry their battery back when it's full, plug it in, and consume the energy. And in that model, um, we developed a home electrification kit which is, again, it's just the end use of the energy. So it's a battery box, a battery, um, a charge controller to prevent over-discharge, the wiring, the lighting, for example, switches, and maybe an outlet or two. Um, so that kit is something we've put together. And then what we've done in, in a few communities is we've worked with a microfinance institution that's based in Bluefields, where we're operationally headquartered out of they had not previously done any loans to indigenous people outside of Bluefields, but over a couple of years of, of working with us, um, they extended their sort of their loan service area and did home loan, essentially home improvement loans to these people so that they could purchase the home electrification kit and have it installed by Blue Energy. So it the financing, I mean that's a piece of the story. Uh, the cost is still too high. Um, these are really the kind of the poorest, most marginalized people that don't don't have access to a lot of economic activity. And so, even at that, even with the microfinance arrangement, uh, what we did is we we had part of it be covered by grant funding, by, by grant funding coming from the outside. So right now, Blue Energy is working in 15 different communities, um, serving about 3,000 people with very different solutions tailored um, to each specific community. But I think some of the strongest impact we've seen is in the community of Monkey Point, where we've been working since 2007. Um, we now have a wind turbine installed there. We have a solar array that's been expanded actually twice. And we have some home electrification kits installed, and we also have done some water filters in that community and the portable lights. So once you start to layer these services, you start to see a real shift sort of in the culture of the community. And what we're what we we don't see Blue Energy providing solutions to it, you know, to all the problems um, in these communities. We see our role as really being a catalyst. We can help provide these people basic services and help inspire them to new opportunities that they never had access to before, then it's very encouraging to see them start to think through, um, you know, opportunities that they can create for themselves. So in the most recent development, just last week, we installed uh, the first freezer in Monkey Point because we've been working with a group of fishermen to form a fishing cooperative. And what they needed was cold storage so that they can preserve the fish and get much higher value for it in the market, whereas before they couldn't get their fish to market fresh. So international fishermen would come down the coast and buy from them at a greatly reduced rate. So one of the major aspects of making these sort of interventions of providing basic services uh, renewable over the long term is that it has to be linked in some way to income generation. So that's a perfect example where over the years providing these services and, and helping inspire the people there that now they're, they're just starting to get this fishing um, cooperative off the ground and I think that's going to have a very tremendous impact in the community. <laughs> Bello malecón, encaje 